I want to start in that regard by asking one of our speakers, and I'll introduce them as we go along, Mr. Espen Egil Hansen, who's the editor-in-chief of Aften Posten uh, Norway, one of the most esteemed papers in Norway. He made headlines, many of you may know, September last year, because he challenged Facebook's founder, Mark Zuckerberg. He said, Mark, you are an editor. The reason why he did that, I'll ask him to, to tell you. He, as part of his campaign, I suppose, to get the social media companies to take more proactive steps about what's happening on their, their platforms, he also argued that not only is Mark an editor, but an algorithm is an editor. Tell us more what you, why you said those two things. Are we on? Thank you. Well, actually, first, I feel a need, uh, after listening to the discussion, uh, to give some credit to uh, social uh, media. Uh, there is a lot of uh, criticism, and I certainly have been one of the louder voices. Uh, but internet um, was a democratization of the possibility to express. So in the perspective of freedom of speech, internet has given us all value. And social media lowered the barrel, made it easier to participate. And I think that's an, a really important uh, effect. And ironically, when I wrote my letter, published it in a uh, uh, large but small paper in a small country, it immediately went global, the story. And ironically, I think it was Facebook that made, it, made this story so big. So yes, um, to your question, f four years ago I predicted uh, the algorithm will be the editor, and she that controls the algorithm will be the new editor-in-chief. I was wrong about the she. Um, tech is heavily uh, a male industry, but I think I was right in what has happened. Today, the algorithm is the editor-in-chief. It is the algorithms that decide decides what will end up in your feed. And it's a reality. The majority of, of, of the younger generation, the younger crowds, in some countries, a majority of the whole people, social media is the most important source for news. So that is why there is so much power now connected to how you make that algorithm. And it's not a neutral thing. It's people making the choices what signals will be weighted in that algorithm, and we all have a bias. So I think that's the first learning that we have to realize that Facebook, Google, and other of the global platforms, they take choices, they do choices every day in, in how they edit the content uh, stream. Then I would like to, to mm, yes. yes. If I can interrupt for a sec, can you tell people who don't know the particular incident which led you to this letter to Mark Zuckerberg? Okay, the, the particular incident was, uh, many of you will remember the photogra photograph taken by uh, Nick Ut from the Vietnam War called the Terror of War, or often called the Napalm Girl. Then, in September last year, there was a, another picture from Syria, the little boy. Uh, there had been a bomb. He was in shock. And it, ha it had an effect on us, this uh, picture. And there was a Norwegian author, Tom Egeland. He wrote a Facebook post about five photos, journalistic photos that, in his opinion, changed the course of the war. 
And uh, he, he now says that by accident, this very picture, terror of war, was on top of his feed. And it disappeared very, very fast. And he thought it was a mistake. So he republished the photo. He then got a warning uh, initially that if he didn't stop posting this picture, he would be thrown out of or banned uh, from Facebook forever because it was a question of nudity. Uh, as you remember, this, this girl is naked because her uh, clothes has been burned off by the napalm. So then my paper wrote a story about this, and as we often do, we share that story on Facebook, and it ended up with us getting a letter from Facebook saying that if Often Posten is not stopping to publish this picture, we will also be banned from Facebook, potentially from forever. So I, I, I wrote a letter, uh, published it in, in uh, Often Posten, uh, telling Mark Zuckerberg uh, that I wouldn't comply uh, with this. I also uh, told that I think Facebook can do better, that uh, Facebook has a respons responsibility. Zuckerberg is the most powerful editor in the world just now. And with that follows a responsibility. You are not a pure tech company anymore. You're a media company. And that was the start of a very interesting uh, discussion. 